Father Ben Cameron came. Oh, yes. Right. And he said two things that really struck me. First, you should pray and ask God to give you a religious vocation. And that really hit me because at that point, I didn't want one, nor did I like to pray. And then the second thing he said is some people just pray and they never do anything. You also have to go and visit communities. You can't Excellent. expect that God's going to drop it into your lap. People often wonder who we are. Why do we dress this way? What do we do all day? Why do we live this kind of life? What does it mean to be a sister, a priest, a Catholic? We want to help you navigate life through faith to find the truth of God and all His glory, because the truth shall set you free. Welcome back to our podcast on vocations, The Truth Shall Set You Free. We are just so very happy that you are here to listen to another beautiful story of one of our sisters. And today, I'm very pleased to have with me Sister Mary Margaret. And Sister Mary Margaret is from Denver, Colorado, but I don't want to tell her story. I will let you, Sister, please tell us your story. Thank you so much, Sister. I love to talk about my story because... I'm so grateful to God for bringing me here. Beautiful. Um, beautiful. So I grew up in Denver I, in a Catholic family. I'm the second of five children. Yeah. And actually, I thought of religious life, at least vaguely, from a young age. I loved reading the lives of the saints. Oh. And St. Francis Cabrini lived in my neighborhood about 70 years before I did. Oh, my and goodness. And so I wanted to be like her. That's beautiful. Um, so let me just reiterate the lives of the saints. They're so powerful. Let's get them back and read them no matter what age we are. Please continue, sister. Yes. Yeah, and I was attracted to sisters. There weren't a lot of sisters that I saw, but when the daughters of St. Paul would sell books outside of church or the other, other sisters we'd see, I was always very fascinated by them. Oh. And when I was about nine or 10, um, our new bishop of the diocese, Archdiocese of Denver, was Archbishop Stafford. Yes. So he, in, one of the first things he did was he invited poor Claire nuns to come to Denver. And their monastery was about two Smart. miles from our house. And uh, before they moved in, they had a tour, an open house, so you could co go and see where they lived, see their monastery, see the boards and straw they slept on, like see their their little wow. monastery. Um and so my mother took me and two of my sisters. Oh, sweet. And we toured the monastery. And then afterwards, you ended up in the garden, the monastery garden. And there was the archbishop and probably the important benefactors, a lot of adult people. And the archbishop came over to us and he said, would you like to see the nun's garden? And I was really struck because it was, for me, it was like God, Pope, Bishop. Like <laughs> and I couldn't believe that he was talking to us. Oh. And so he took these three little girls around the garden, pointed out all the religious, like the mosaics and the walls and the statues. How and kind. I'm even more touched now that I'm an adult and realize that he could have been talking to the benefactors, but he chose us. A future cardinal. And so he, um, <sighs> at the end, he said, now, have any of you ever thought about becoming a nun? And so if I'd, I think I was probably too shy to say anything back to him. But I thought, wow, maybe I could be. Oh. Um, so we planted a little seed in my mind that this Beautiful. could be a possibility. And so by the time I got to high school, I decided that I really wanted to get married. I didn't really ask God about what he wanted, but I wanted to be a mother like my mom. And so I went to a Catholic college because I wanted to find a nice Catholic husband and get married and live happily ever after. Now, during high school, did that seed continue to grow or was it a little bit dormant on because you didn't particularly want to? I continued to practice my faith, but I think it was, I wasn't really thinking about that. I was thinking, more thinking about what I wanted in life, not yeah. what God wanted for me in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my favorite thing to do was to sing. And so I thought of going to college for music. And in the end, I decided that I didn't think I enough, had enough talent and I was also afraid that if I went and made it a career, that I wouldn't enjoy it so much because mm -hmm. that was my favorite thing. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And it gave me so much joy. I love music. So I ended mm -hmm. up going to Thomas Aquinas College in California, and I loved my experience there. And I started going to daily mass because it was convenient. Mm -hmm. There was mass before every meal, so you could take your pick. And <laughs> there was a lot of everyone, or not everyone, but many people went to mass, so it was very easy to go. And um, I started to realize that, you know, I don't really like to pray. And <laughs> I didn't know what to do about that. So I would go to Mass, and then I'd go to Benediction every evening. I loved Benediction. 
It was helpful. It was very short. (laughs) (laughs) Sister, let me point out, you really had a very important ingredient before a young person can know his or her vocation, whatever the vocation God's calling is, you had and worked on the gift of self-knowledge because you knew you didn't, you weren't a very good prayer. You did not believe that you were. And yet the desire was there. And I want to really point that out. If someone says I could never be a priest or a, a religious sister, because I really don't like to pray that much, perhaps that's where you need to pray more for that gift. Because again, the gift comes from God. We don't do it ourselves, as as we have already said. All good things come from God, and we receive, and then we give them back to Him. So that was that was Definitely. very beautiful, Sister, that you pointed that out. Thank yes. you. Okay. Did, what did you do about this so, fact you didn't like to pray that much? <laughs> well, I kept going to Mass. Okay, um, you continued I, to pray. I um, I knew, or I, I was still dating a little bit in college, but I would go to all the events that were for religious sisters because I was still fascinated by sisters. Mm. Um, and it didn't really seem quite possible that it could be for me because I didn't like to pray, and that seemed to be like a big <laughs> criterion. So my senior year... I was writing my thesis, and I thought, what's going to keep me interested for a whole year writing a paper? And so more than anything else, I wanted to know what is happiness? What's going to make me happy? Mm. And so I spent my year thinking and reading and writing about what happiness is. So I was reading Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas. Sister, that was my thesis when I was in college on happiness, Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas. And they were telling me that contemplation is in the happiness of God. I thought, that's boring. I don't like to pray. <laughs> um, but they were convincing me intellectually. And so that the first semester while I was working on my thesis, um, you and your sister, Sister Mary Teresa, came to visit our that's campus. Mm-hmm. No, actually, it was before you came. Sorry. One of the Fathers of Mercy, Father Ben Cameron, came. Oh, yes. Right. And so he was giving a vocation talk to men and women. And he said two things that really struck me. And he said, first, you should pray and ask God to give you a religious vocation. Hmm. And that really hit me because at that point, I didn't want one, (laughs) nor did I like to pray. And then the second thing he said is some people just pray and they never do anything. So he said, you also have to go and visit communities. You can't expect that God's going to drop it into your lap. So after that, I go to the chapel on campus for like two minutes every day. And I say, Jesus, if it's your will, please give me a religious location, but I'd rather get married. So I made sure he knew what I wanted. Okay. And um, and two minutes was about my maximum of like private prayer. <laughs> so I did this probably from October. And then in February, that was when you and your sister, Sister Mary Teresa, came to visit. And you invited me on retreat. Yes. And um, the retreat was probably two weeks later. And um, a friend of mine who is tech savvy showed me how to buy a ticket online. And... I bought a ticket for two weeks later. And then we had dinner that evening, and you came and sat with us out of all the students at TAC that were there. And you started by saying, and I said, are you coming on the retreat? And you said, I already have my plane ticket. And I just about fell out of my chair. Few people respond that quickly to grace. They kind of hem and haw around, sadly. But sister, I liked your enthusiasm. Especially because that was not, I'm a very careful person. Yes, you are. And I don't do things, I don't jump into things. True. So I was actually amazed at myself that I bought a plane ticket. (laughs) Nor did I buy expensive things very quickly. That's Uh, true. So it was, it really was God's grace. That's true. So my older sister at that time was living in Michigan. So I called her up and I said, "Um, Kate, guess what? I'm coming to Michigan in two weeks. Can you pick me up at the airport? I'm going to retreat. She said, where are you going on retreat? (laughs) And I said, with the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. And she said, I'm going on that retreat too. (laughs) So both of us have been thinking about religious life separately and had never talked about it. Oh, really? So we both ended up on the same retreat. She picked me up at the airport, (laughs) brought me to retreat. And at the end of the treat, retreat, she asked for papers, and she asked for an application to enter the community. And I was still thinking about, I, well, my experience, I loved the sisters, and I was really struck by their joy. Because mm, here I've been writing beautiful. my paper on happiness, and they had what I wanted, beautiful. and I could tell that it came from God, and knowing mm. that they were doing His will. 
Mm. And they were living out what Thomas Aquinas was telling me. <laughs> but I also thought, I'm still not, I still don't like to pray. And also, how could two of us have vocation to the same place? That also seemed unlikely to me. So my sister entered the convent that August, and I got a job teaching grade school at a Catholic school in Denver. And the following February, I just, my sister wrote to me, she said, are you going to come on retreat again? And I hadn't <laughs> been planning on it because I thought, well, if I didn't know the first time, how would I know now? And I left the first retreat thinking, I think I have a religious vocation, but I'm not sure it's here. And I don't know how I'll ever know. So I came on another retreat. And that time, as soon as I got to the mother house, I just felt like I was home. Hmm. This is my home. Hmm. And that Jesus was going to have to help me learn how to pray. <laughs> I think he yes. can handle it. And I forgot to mention that during that year, I was as I was teaching, um, my home and my school were about two miles apart. And in the middle was an adoration chapel okay. that I had never known existed before. Maybe it didn't before, but it did then. Uh -huh. And so I was stopping my way home from work. And I, would, I had raised my maximum from two to ten minutes. Oh, and eventually 15. Beautiful. So I just stop and I would ask Jesus to help me pray. And I probably just sat there like telling him how bored I was and how this wasn't any fun. <laughs> but, but you stayed. But I would go. Yes. Uh -huh. I would go. Mm -hmm. And um, so that second retreat, I asked for an application and was accepted and entered that August. And my sister actually was in the community for six years. And then at renewal of vows, she discerned that it wasn't God's will for her. And I was sa I was so sad for her because I was so happy in religious life. Um. But it's beautiful because she's now married and she has four children. And I can see that she is so happy in the married life. And it's beautiful to see two different vocations. Mm -hmm. And both of us are so happy in what God has given us. Sister, that's a beautiful message to everyone. You will be so happy if you do God's will. So your sister Kate did um, offer God first dibs, so to speak, and learned through time that that was not indeed his will, that it was to get married. And I am sure she brought a lot of convent lessons <laughs> into her marriage, and her husband was very appreciative of these kinds of virtues that we have to learn in, in a big community life, yes. you know, as well. And I should add that I told you before that my favorite thing was singing. Yes. And about a year or two after I entered the community, I suddenly realized that God gave me exactly what I wanted and I didn't know it because um, we sing every day. Many times. Not We're not singing for a career, but it's for God's glory out of love for him. And so he gave me that great joy, what I had always wanted not even knowing that that was what I was going to get. That is absolutely beautiful. Sister, thank you. You have a very beautiful story. And I think part of the beauty of it, too, is for our listeners to realize that if a young person is open to God's will, God's will will be done. And if there's part of this is, is a preparation of oneself, but that desire to give everything. And also, Sister, I want to point out something you made very, very clear. It's that determination to give oneself to God as God asks. And so for you, part of the struggle was you did not like to pray. And yet you come from a very prayerful family. I know your family, everyone is, is just so prayerful and so beautiful. But again, that fact of self-knowledge. So, Sister, I think in um, in your own story, you have given our listeners and, and myself as well so many lessons to be able to pass on to others as well as to take to heart ourselves. And and it's just been delightful to talk to you, Sister Mary Margaret, and you just keep that radiant smile. Everybody knows you by your smile, and you, you just keep giving that gift of self because God is using that spiritual motherhood in many ways that we'll only know in heaven. So thank you, sister. And thank, thank you, you all for listening. And tune in to many, many more because I have a lot of beautiful sisters. God bless you all.